You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone, the remake of Carrie is coming out in theaters this week, and you know what that means. Pig's Blood is coming back in fashion. Also, another episode of Don't F with the Original with... Nicholas, I'm the video game correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. By now you should know the drill, folks. There's a remake coming out, we dig up the original, and we discuss it to near death. Indeed. That's what we do. Yeah, and we're damn acceptable at it. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, Carrie is a 1976 Brian De Palma film based on a Stephen King story. Really? Oh, you didn't know that? Nope. Yeah, Stephen King wrote that. Was Actually, it's one of the better stories. Okay, was it just a short story or a big novel thing? It's a novel. Good to know. <laughs> um... So the story, essentially, we open uh, with a uh, young Carrie, played by C.C. Spacek. Uh, she's awkward. She's being bullied by her uh, by her peers. Yes. Like, really harsh. I know. And uh, most of it comes from the fact that she is really awkward and sheltered because her mom's really, really, really loopy. Yes. Uh, she's like this sort of like ultra-religious nutbag. And uh, the movie essentially follows um, Carrie as she gets a date for the prom and builds slowly towards prom night where uh, people are trying to get back at her for... Being weird? Yeah, for existing, essentially. Guess, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's where the movie gets most of its tension. It's just like the days before that prom until the prom where it's sort of like a ticking bomb, essentially. Yeah. Oh! And I forgot. Also, she has telekinetic powers. That's sort of important. It started really weird, first of all, you know. She, you see them playing volleyball, then Carrie misses the ball, and then the game's over, and everybody's angry at her for, for missing the ball. I was like, is that how gym class ends if somebody misses the ball? <laughs> gym class ends, and then really gratuitous shower scene. Everybody there is like, am I watching Carrie or Carrie Triple X here? What is this? It does feel like a softcore <laughs> movie at the beginning. I know. I like, it has like that sort of like dreamy... 1970s penthouse feel yeah. to it, where the it's the light's a bit oversaturated, and like it, like the little music from like the classic French Emmanuel movies as yeah. she's taking a shower and rubbing the soap between her legs, and you're like, that's an interesting take, Brian De Palma. I know, so it's like this is this is, is am, am I watching the right movie here? Is <laughs> I get by the wrong thing? But at the same time, I get where what he's setting up because he's setting up this sort of moment of. Uh, of serenity for her like the music is very serene for her you, you get the sense that the shower is making her feel better about after a shitty period yeah. not the literal period but the class of like bad volleyball game yeah and you know and all of that falls apart when she starts bleeding from her vagina yeah and she doesn't know what's going on because she hasn't been raised with sex ed because her mother's a crazy religious actually religion. her mother thinks that if you get a period it's because you're wicked you know, well, no, she thinks woman is wicked, so she understands that period is the beginning to womanhood, and that, and since woman is wicked, that means you're going to become wicked. Okay, she so, has a book that's like yeah. Sins of Woman. I know, and she was basically hitting Carrie with the book, but it, it really made me feel like you know, if, if you know, until you don't have a period, you're fine, you know, and now that you have your period, you know, if you if you had been fine your whole life, yeah, you would not be having your period now, you know, it's like uh, okay. now, now there's something wrong with you now because you start you start having your period, so you did something wrong, you are now wicked. Yeah, it, it's, it's she hates women a lot. We'll get back to that in, in, in a bit because I think that's a common theme in the movie about the hatred of women, but it gets you into Carrie's skin, whereas like. Oh, this is sort of serene, and it's like, all right, it's sort of dreamy. That's nice. I was like, and then blood goes up. What the hell, you know? Yeah. And of course, because we know what a period is, they couldn't have just shown it straight. And then she has her period because our reaction was like, oh, she's having her period. Yeah. Whereas if like it's all like a dream softcore porn movie, you're like, no, 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 okay, cute music, and then there's blood. And you're like, what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. And at least it gets you a little bit into her skin by doing that. Okay. Yeah. And another way to take it as well is also the idea of like womanhood being presented 
in the penthouse sort of way, like almost literally. Yes, I and that's in that sort of objectification. It's like you see gratuitous boob shots. You see her rubbing herself in this erotic way when really she's just taking a shower. Let's all calm the hell down from yeah. her perspective, at least. Pretty much. And then the reality of womanhood kicking in, as in, well, she has her period. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that, you know, you don't see in Penthouse magazine, you know? Like, yeah. there's not, like, Miss Jenner with blood dripping down her <laughs> legs, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's the reality of womanhood sort of, like, hitting you like a brick, you know? Yeah. And so there's two ways of taking it, so... And then the whole class making fun of you for having your period. Oh, man, they're so mean about it. They're psychotic. Yeah. Just throwing stuff at you in the shower and you're just still pounding her with, I'm like, oh my god, leave the poor girl alone, you feel terrible for her. <laughs> you really do. You mentioned um, her mother hitting her with the Bible. Yeah. Like, that's one thing about the Carrie movie that made me laugh. Everybody's slapping everyone in that movie. Yeah. Like, the gym teacher is slapping two students. She slaps Carrie and she slaps Nancy Allen's character. Yeah. Nancy Allen, who would later become Robocop's uh, partner, by the way. And... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. The mother slaps people. Like, everybody's slapping everybody. Like, John Travolta. John Travolta is in this movie. He yeah. plays Nancy Ellen's boyfriend. Slaps his girlfriend. Girlfriend slaps him. Yeah, it's it's like, wow. They really, you know... <laughs> it was this thing about hitting people, I guess. <laughs> and it's a little bit hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I guess, because they're not really strong slaps, too. They're, ag- they're actor slaps, but, you, but they're very bad actor slaps. So you, don't, you really don't feel like there's a lot of, you know weight behind them so it's basically like you know you hitting it playfully hitting a kid it's mm. like come on what was that you know <laughs> seriously <laughs> at the same time if i were nancy allen and john travolta was like slapping me and i mean like don't get me wrong like she was being a snot yeah. but like if i were being a snot like her and the first time my boyfriend would hit me i'd be like i'm gone yeah like that is it done it goes both ways. If my girlfriend hits me, it's like, yeah, you better have a pretty good reason. Like, you know, we're having sex or something. Because <laughs> if not, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> no, it kind of, you know, it's ridiculous. It's like people, especially that couple, it's like they hate each other, but they're still together. It's, yeah. It's really weird. I guess she likes him because he's cool and he has this car and there's no really no other attraction besides that. Or maybe like he, he is sort of a mean bastard. Like he, he does end up killing a pig in cold blood. I mean, that's really weird. Yes. And like, like I'm not saying a butcher is mean. Like that's his job. But like this dude is like, yeah, let's go kill a pig. Like that should affect you more. Like he's a little bit yeah. messed up. And for no reason as well. Because you can buy pig's blood if you want to. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> completely <laughs> pointless, you know, killing a pig scene. Yeah, actually, you know, I I would have liked to see the draining part. Like, how did they figure out how to drain a, uh, the pig afterwards? Because they get into like the, this fuel tank, essentially, little bucket yeah. thing. Like the, the the those things are small. The opening for it. Like, yeah. how did they like? Did he like put a tube into the pig and then like start sucking and then put yeah. the thing into it? I guess so. You mm-hmm. know, it's like you know, like you empty a pool the same way. You know, <laughs> exactly. a little tube there it makes perfect sense for a pig. And what we're saying is that John Travolta is gross. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> in, the, in the movie, in the movie. In real life, too. <laughs> okay. It was a cheap shot for nothing. I actually thought, you know, those girls that were really mean to carry, they got off so easy. Their detention was going to gym class for like a couple of, you know... I would, what is it? What? A week? A week of gym, gym class, extra gym class. It's like some people have killed for that, you know, in our high school. It's like... Uh, totally. The, detention kind of sucks, you know. It's like, no, you just have to, you know, get healthy. That's your, that's your punishment. Get healthy, and it was like, no, we can't do this. It's like it's just gym class. Deal with it, girl. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm considering how mean they're. Like the opening scene is really shocking. How yeah, mean they're. I in a believable way. That's the thing. Too. I know. You know, in movies, I find one of the big problems is that they portray bullying so over the top. That you know, whatever. Yeah. No, this one, like, no, you could see kids actually doing it. Yeah, that. you could see just one starting it and everybody else, you know, that was funny. Let's just get back in and just being super mean without realizing it. I yeah. could totally see that. And yet, they were really, you know, terrible. One girl realized it, then she's like, yeah, you know, we, can't, we kind of deserve this, you know. The idea is that the girls are all revolted at the idea that she doesn't know what a period is, like she doesn't know what menstruating is, yeah. and that makes her so stupid and, uh, and worthy of all of that harassment. Yeah. And I think what changes one girl's mind is that she gets to see what Carrie's mother is like. Yes. And that gives her an explanation, and she goes like, oh, 
I really dogpiled the wrong kid. And you make a good point also about the punishment being very light. Yeah. And, but I think that's intentional uh, because we uh, the gym teacher actually does say that like if it were up to me, it'd be way more severe. Yeah. But the administration won't take this seriously. And I think that rings true as well. Yeah. Like just the conversation Carrie has with the principal who can't bother to learn her name because he can't, he doesn't even take the problem seriously. Yeah. Like it's not like just like oh, he has many students. Why would he remember the name? No, it's like you read the name once, you can remember it, but he just doesn't care because he doesn't understand that a period for a woman can be traumatic if you don't know what it is. For yeah. God's sakes, like you're bleeding from a place you didn't know you could bleed from. It that that's scary. And also bullying is pretty bad, but you know, until recently. It's the you know, law of the jungle at school, you know, they're gonna be bullied and bull you know, bullies and that that's how it is. So yeah. you can totally see that as being, you know you know, what's your problem today? Yeah, exactly. That's what I like about Carrie. Essentially the drama that is not supernatural is a predominant yeah. And be very, very human, very well done. It's engaging. Yeah. I actually gave a shit. I was like, oh, I hope Carrie gets away from like the prank. Like, I hope it ends up well for her. And there's, I, I felt genuinely tense toward the prom night because yeah. I knew the prank was coming, even though like it's a prank, you know. Yeah. And even though you know she gets invited to the prom by that girl that you know takes pity on her, she asks her boyfriend to ask Carrie out at the prom, and you know you're, you still have in the back of your mind, you know. Are they in on the prank, you know, or they, what, what's happening? You know, she just pretend to be nice to her so that, you know, she gets to go to the prom and that happens or, you know. And, and they, they really build that suspense really well, like, because they leave out key information so that you really have no idea until the prank actually happens, whether or not that girl is in on it. Yeah, exactly. One of the things I found interesting as well is it also works as sort of a feminist uh, story, which I found mm -hmm. interesting. Because you start with that objectification image of women, then you have the reality of womanhood kicking in. All the girls turn on her for it. And then the man uh, who's responsible for the school can't take it seriously because it's a fucking women problem. Yeah. You have the gym teacher who's a woman, which at the time, very rare. I mean, like, actually, even when we grew up, yeah. which is considerably later than when this takes place... Women gym teachers, not common. So the, the 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 one good influence in Carrie's life is this woman who is going against gender type. Yeah. And then she comes home and her mother is all about woman is a sin. Like she's the ultra conservative viewpoint. And it's like, you're a sinner because you dare to be a woman. Yeah. Like she actually literally has a book that says uh, sins of woman. And then at the end, it all leads to a moment in the movie where essentially the same thing happens. The prank involves her bleeding in yeah, a way. Pretty much. Again, and people turning on her again. And if you look at it like from a purely symbolic w uh, standpoint, what are they turning on her f for originally? For turning into a woman. Yeah. Like having your period, that's what it is. So it's really the idea of like, you're fucked if you're a woman. <laughs> And like she has all this untapped potential illustrated through the fact that she has telekinetic power. She could literally do anything she sets her mind to. Okay. And everybody turns on her and she, and she lives this tragedy. Like this person ends up being erased from existence, if you will. Okay. At the end. And her only her only sense throughout the entire movie is just having a vagina. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You didn't see it that way. Yeah. I mean, we might go into little spoilers, you know. Well, we have to with yeah. this movie. Basically what happens at the end is that the prank is her being dumped with a bucket of pig's blood. Mm. And now everybody at the prom laughs at her because, you know, that's what people do when they see a prank. And then she uses her telekinetic ability to um, douse everybody with water and that causes a short circuit. And that causes a big fire in the gym. And basically everybody but her and the people who prank her uh, die in the fire. Then the people who try to prank her, trying to run her over, and she kills them with telekinesis again. Unintentionally. Because uh, they try to run over, and yeah. then she turned around as, it's, it's, I think it's self-preservation yeah, that kicked right. in. And then she gets the revenge on her mother as well, you know? Again, not intentionally. Yeah. That's that's one thing, you, the whole telekinesis thing, you know, it's, you know, how could you have her get do all of that unintentionally if she didn't have those weird powers. So I guess, you know, the telekinesis, I think it was that thing that didn't really fit for me in the movie. But, I mean, the way you explained it, it is, yeah, okay, it's a way of her having 
from, like, I guess, her revenge or, you know, protecting herself unintentionally, pretty much. Yeah, that's what it is. I think it's to really heighten the stakes to a supernatural level to sort of hammer down the message of the tragedy. Because okay. that's what it is. It's Because she comes so close. Like, she's finally liberating herself from her mother in yeah. a very mature way, too. Like, she's not being mean to her mother or anything, but she's like, enough is enough. Yeah. There are these boundaries. I'm going to the prom. There's nothing you can do to stop me. I love you, mommy. Yeah. Like, it's about as mature as you can expect from a teenager. <laughs> Pretty from an much. abused teenager. Yes, less. indeed. And, um, you know, and at the prom, the, the her date actually starts to really like her for real. Yeah. He, he's, and it's hard not to because she's so honestly vulnerable. And it's really well played. Like, first of all, CeCe Spacek plays that role super well. Yeah. She's so good in it. And I love little bits like, you know, when she's in the car with her date and he gets out and, like, she's about to open the door to get out herself. And yeah. then she remembers, oh, like, right, I'm on a date. I'm going to step back into the car, close the door, <laughs> and wait for him to open the door for me. Yeah. And it's so cute. Like, it, it's hard not to really like Carrie with little moments like that. She's so visibly vulnerable. Yeah. And he starts to like her and all of that. And, you know, the prank, somebody almost stops the prank, and there's two people looking out for her, and they end up working against one another, and that's how the prank still manages to happen. Yeah. Like, she came so close, and that's that's what makes it such a tragedy. So when you add the telekinetic powers, it's the tragedy becomes, you know, mass murder. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, and it, it really hammers down the point, you know? Yeah. I don't know, however, how that, you know, can translate into modern times, the whole, with the whole bullying thing, and, you know, people snapping. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, people might misunderstand this, and, you know, saying, okay, well, she's just getting revenge on people who are laughing at her, you know, which could be easily seen from this movie, you know? Yeah. So now, what, what do you do in this day and age, you know? So a little kid gets bullied in class, what he does, he comes back with an AK-47 and shoots everybody, you know? But even if it is intentional, clearly the movie doesn't approve of what she's doing. It's not like the movie comes off as like, yay, mass murder. I, I think it's very clear from the setting yeah. of the movie, not least because they make a point of putting her very nice date, who was well-meaning, out of commission early on, and people trying to save him, and her actions keep him from being saved. Yeah. So even if you don't feel for her, which you really should, but at the, at the same point, at the point where she's killing people, it's hard to feel for her. Yeah. You should feel for him. So it's clearly a tragedy. Yeah. I mean, like, to a certain degree, if you go back to the feminist metaphor, is that, is it, you know, like, if when you extinguish this emblem of woman, if you will, everybody loses. It's not just the woman that loses. Okay. Everybody pays for it. That's interesting. You know so you can see it that way. And I mean, like, I also see it that way for the real life tragedies, to be honest, to a certain degree, like where, look, if, you, if those kids that are pushed to their limit, yeah, there and there's that impulse, I can, I can understand how it happened without approving of what they're doing. Yeah. You know? It, of course you shouldn't do that. No, you should. You is know? the thing. Like, it's you know? But that doesn't change the fact that they were victimized before they got victimized to the point that they turned into, well, they did something monstrous. Yeah, that's true. You know? So I, it's a delicate balance. I totally yeah. agree with you, but I don't think it's an impossible balance. Okay. I mean, even Carrie 2 managed to keep a little bit of that spirit, uh, of the correct spirit. They made a Carrie 2? Yeah, back in the 1990s. Was it any good? <laughs> well, I think it... I think I would have liked it more if they had called it a remake of Carrie <laughs> than a sequel, because it was like the same fucking story. Okay. <laughs> you know? So this Carrie is the second remake of Carrie. Nice. <laughs> you will, yeah. Interesting. Uh, but they mixed it with golf culture a little bit more, uh, her telekinesis and all of that. Like, uh, okay. So there was an effort to sort of adapt that um, unhinged empowerment to the culture of the 90s. Yeah. Whereas in the first one, she does try and research Luke telekinesis and stuff like that. Actually, that goes absolutely nowhere. She just she just has telekinesis at one point. You just accept it. <laughs> that's that's where it is. Well, it works for the metaphor. I agree. It doesn't really work for the plot. It's like, oh, I have telekinesis. I've read the word telekinesis, and it's like, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But in terms of her empowerment, it works though, because like she has these things, and then she realizes what these things are. Okay. And she gets it through education which she's not being granted. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. So. Okay. 
I guess that brings us to the remake. And yeah, um, one of the things I wonder about the remake is if they can pull it off because a lot of it of the original Carrie, I think, is celebrated because of Brian De Palma. I think his visual style okay. is something. It's very peculiar when you watch Carrie, first of all. Like, there's a lot of shots of, like, like we mentioned the penthouse pornography moment. Yeah, yeah. And he has a lot of experimental shots that, to me, really in, uh, in, enhance the movie from just a standard horror fare. Like, for example, there's this beautiful thing where he's, she's talking to her date, and while they're dancing, and the camera's spinning around them as they're spinning, and it's just... Like, you get dizzy watching it after a while. Yeah. And then, But at the same time, it, it, I, it helps me understand where, where she's at emotionally, where all of this is so overwhelming. Like, her life is just turning all, turning out well all of a sudden that she herself is diz, dizzy by it. Her, she herself feels like she's losing control, but in a sort of pleasant way, and the world's spinning around her instead of her spinning around it, if you will. Okay. And, and those beautiful shots like that are interesting, or... The shot just before the prank yeah. is a slow motion shot with the same music as when she was taking a shower, so getting you back to that mindset. And it's one shot that goes from Carrie and her date sitting at the table being announced as winners of Prom Queen, Prom King. Yeah. Track slowly to where they'll be walking, and then you see Nancy Allen and uh, John Travolta hiding behind the stage where they'll be able to pour the, the, the pig's blood by pulling a cord. Yeah. And then it follows the cord onto the girl that is actually being nice to care, just coming in mm-hmm. and watching from behind. And then the shot, all, still all one shot, goes up all the way to the bucket. And from the bucket then focuses on the teacher who you expect might be doing something or not. So essentially, it's setting up the entire geography of who the players are and what they might be able to do or not do all in one slow tracking shot. It's beautiful, it's ambitious, and it communicates things in such a peculiar way because it's a simple shot that tells you, okay, yeah. game's on. Exactly. This it doesn't have it. to say anything. You know, it's not, yeah. I'm waiting here to pull the cord. You, know, you, yeah. know, you just know everything as it, it's happening. It's, that's well, well put. Yeah. And you don't think that the, the remake can do stuff like that? You think it can, but it's yeah. not easy because yeah. it's that's true artistry. Like okay. you can't take any schlockmeister and just go like make a movie at that level. Okay, is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that they won't necessarily pull it off. I'm just saying the game is a little bit harder than remaking something like Prom Night, for example. Okay. And you think they're just gonna now since it, it's a big team, they might just focus more on just the bullying and not the feminism part of it all. I th- I think that's a really good question because yeah, bullying is the in thing. Yeah. So not that it's a wrong thing to be you know worried about you know bullying is terrible and you shouldn't be worried about it, but you know. yeah, but but it is a hot topic du yeah. jour, so it is likely to get more attention. I, I think you that you bring up an excellent point. It makes me worried and brings me back to a, an earlier topic. If you make it too much about bullying, you know, when Carrie, I don't know if she's going to have telekinetic powers or whatever in this movie. Oh, well, she has to. I think okay. it's integral to the okay. story. When she goes crazy and, you know, she, she snaps, how do you not see this as just, you know, somebody be snapping from bullying and not just wanting revenge on the bullies? Yeah. I, I, although even if she did just want revenge on the bullies... Uh, as long as you don't film it in a way that celebrates it, you you you're, yeah. you still have a viable story there. Okay. Because it, it's still a tragedy. Like yeah. you have like this girl that could have turned out well and then turns out into a murderer. Sad day for everyone. That's a good point. Uh, from the previews, from the trailer, we see that the carnage extends far beyond just the 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 school. Okay. Uh, it looks like she's taking down the entire village. Oh my god, was she bullied by the whole village? I swear to God, that's terrible. <laughs> well, I, she doesn't have to be, right? If, if she explodes emotionally, that's true. It should, it's like a bomb. You that, know? Is, that is true. Um, and the injustice of it, of not the people being involved paying for it, helps the tragedy. So That's true. So, at least it seems to, to go in a direction where it's not a case of a simple revenge tale that they're going to tell. Because if she's taking down the entire village, <laughs> I dare hope that the movie acknowledges that it's not the entire village that's responsible for hey, what's happening to her. Doesn't it take a village to raise a child? So maybe <laughs> they did a very crummy job altogether. <laughs> and she's... Oh, no, you're right. It's probably just her losing... Con- 
I hope they're just not used Carrie because she has telekinesis and that's the only thing they use in the movie. That that oh, just be God. bad just for name recognition, you know. Yeah. Carrie, people know Carrie, people come and see it because she has telekinesis and you know, they use nothing at all. That'd be terrible. Alright, so I think their answer to that is pretty mm-hmm. obvious, but I'm gonna ask you anyway, um do you think it's gonna fuck with the original or that it should? The second part is the obvious part. <laughs> it's probably gonna fuck with the original. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it should a little bit. I mean, it should change the theme to be more in 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 following with the fact that it's 2013. So yeah. you know, change the feminism a little bit, a little bit more about bullying. But again, uh, I, I'm very scared. That it's just gonna be some you know carries the monster kind of movie, and you know the nice girl in that was in yours or Carrie is pretty much the one that's gonna be surviving at the end because she stops Carrie somehow. Hmm. You know, that's going to be the ending of the movie. Mark my words. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> um, I have a little bit more hope for uh, for, uh, for it uh, uh, than you do. I, I think because bullying is such a hot topic, uh, I think producers are going are likely to be more sensitive to that part of the story okay. and less likely to fuck it up. Yeah, if they fuck it up, I could see the press being all over that. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's too Columbine-y for for people not to notice the resemblance of the final scene, if you will. Yeah, you know, like oh, oh it's not the same. Instead of a machine gun, she's massacring people with uh with her telekinetic powers. Like, who are you fooling? You yeah. know, like so she's I, using mind bullets. It's a real bullet. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so. I think they're going to be more aware of that, so that's uh, that gives me hope that the movie's going to be a lot better than the remake of Last House to the Left, for example. Yeah, it'd be kind of gross, you know, just, you know, her bringing out the gym and just walking out with a giant smile and, you know, like, and just, you know, thumbs up to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> As to whether or not it should mess with the original, I'm actually a bit more conservative than you are. I think they should really stick to the spirit of the original thoroughly. I think our difference of opinion comes from the fact that you sort of like, you appreciate the, the original movie. Yeah. Whereas actually, I, I hardly recommend it. I think it actually transcends the genre uh, to a certain level. And I hate to use that word. And I'm already hating myself for using that word. But I th- Which word? The? Transcend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I mean by that is that non-horror fans are more likely to appreciate this movie than another classic horror movie okay i think it's a movie that's much more accessible for non-fans and so if you want to dip your toes into the horror genre but you're more into psychological drama characters and whatnot i think carrie's a great place to start okay so and and for that reason alone i think i'm more enthusiastic to see a remake because it would be great to have another movie like that for another generation all right makes sense all right. So on that note, if you have any questions, comments, you want to share with us why Carrie is horrible. Like, I don't know why I'm always like, you want to do the opposite of what we just said. Or you want to give us a little bit some of positivity here. And, you know, yeah, I'm always inviting the trolls. This is what I'm doing is the weirdest thing. Hey, we feed on trolls. <laughs> yeah. They say, don't feed the troll. We feed on the trolls. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, troll us, we dare you. <laughs> <laughs> you can write us at mail at idiomanic.com or post a comment at idiomanic.com. Just, po- uh, just click on the episode name. And uh, we're also on Twitter, we're also on iTunes, we're also on Facebook. If you could like us on Facebook, we would so appreciate it. It helps us get the support to continue to provide content for you. And if you don't like us on Facebook, I will have no choice but to spend the next half hour throwing tampons at Nick. I might use a few of those. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Through the shower scene, everybody there is like, am I watching Carrie or Carrie Triple X here? What is this? It does feel like a softcore movie at the beginning. I know. I like, it has like that sort of like dreamy... 1970s penthouse feel yeah. to it where the it's the light's a bit oversaturated and like it like the little music from like the f- classic French Emmanuel movies as yeah. she's taking a shower and rubbing the soap between her legs and you're like 
That's an interesting take, Brian De Palma. I know, so it's like, this is, this is, is am, am I watching the right movie here? Is <laughs> they buy the wrong thing? But at the same time, I get where, what he's setting up, because he's setting up this sort of moment of, uh, of serenity for her, like the music is very serene for her. You, you get the sense that the shower is making her feel better about after a shitty period, yeah. not the literal period, but the class of like bad volleyball game. Yeah, and you know, and all of that falls apart when she starts bleeding from her vagina. Yeah, and she doesn't know what's going on because she hasn't been raised with sex ed because her mother's a crazy religious. Actually, religion. her mother thinks that if you get a period, it's because you're wicked. You know. You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone! The remake of Carrie is coming out in theaters this week, and you know what that means. Pig's Blood is coming back in fashion. Also, another episode of Don't F with the Original with... Nicholas, I'm the vegan correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. By now you should know the drill, folks. There's a remake coming out, we dig up the original, and we discuss it to near death. Indeed. That's what we do. Yeah, and we're damn acceptable at it. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, Carrie is a 1976 Brian De Palma film based on a Stephen King story. Really? Oh, you didn't know that? Nope. Yeah, Stephen King wrote that. Was Actually, it's one of the better stories. Okay, was it just a short story or a big novel thing? It's a novel. Good to know. <laughs> um. So the story, essentially, we open... Up yeah. And another way to take it as well is also the idea of, like, womanhood being presented in the penthouse sort of way, like, almost literally. Yes, I in that, guess. In that sort of objectification, as, like, you see gratuitous boob shots, you see her rubbing herself in this erotic way when really she's just taking a shower and it's all calm the hell down, from yeah. her perspective, at least. Pretty much. And then the reality of womanhood kicking in, as in, well, she has her period. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that, you know, you don't see in Penthouse magazine, you know? Like, yeah. there's not, like, Miss Jenner with blood dripping down her <laughs> legs, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's the reality of womanhood sort of, like, hitting you like a brick, you know? Yeah. And so there's two ways of taking it, so... And then the whole class making fun of you for having your period. Oh, man, they're so mean about it. They're psychotic. Yeah. Just throwing stuff at you in the shower, and they're just still pounding her with. I'm like, oh my god, leave the poor girl alone. You feel terrible for her. <laughs> I really do. You mentioned um, her mother hitting her with the Bible. Yeah. Like, that's one thing about the Carrie movie that made me laugh. Everybody's slapping everyone in that movie. Yeah. Well, no, she thinks woman is wicked, so she understands that period is the beginning to womanhood, and that, and since woman is wicked, that means you're going to become wicked. Okay. She so, has a book that's like yeah. Sins of Woman. I know, and she was basically hitting Carrie with the book, but it, it really made me feel like, you know, if, if, you know, until you don't have a period, you're fine, you know, and now that you have your period, you know, if you, if you had been fine your whole life, yeah. you would not be having your period now, you know, it's like uh, okay. now, now there's something wrong with you now because you start, you start having your period, so you did something wrong. You are now wicked. Yeah. It, it's, it's She hates women a lot. We'll get back to that in, in, in a bit because I think that's a common theme in the movie about hatred of women. But it gets you into Carrie's skin. Where it's like, oh, this is sort of serene. And it's like, all right, it's sort of dreamy. That's nice. And, like, and then blood goes like, what the hell? You know? Yeah. And, of course, because we know what a period is, they couldn't have just shown it straight and then she has her period. Because our reaction was like, oh, she's having her period. Yeah. Whereas if, like, it's all like a dream softcore porn movie, you're like, no, 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 okay, cute music. And then there's blood, and you're like, what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. And at least it gets you a little bit into her skin by doing that. Okay. Uh, with uh, young Carrie, played by CeCe Spacek, uh, she's awkward. She's being bullied by her, uh, by her peers. Yes. Like, really harsh. I know. And uh, most of it comes from the fact that she is really awkward and sheltered because her mom's l really, really, really loopy. Yes. Uh, she's like this sort of like ultra-religious nutbag. And uh, the movie essentially follows um, Carrie as she gets a date for the prom and builds slowly towards prom night where uh, people are trying to get back at her for being weird. Yeah, for existing, essentially. I guess, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's where the movie gets most of its tension. It's just, like, the days before that prom, until the prom where 
It's sort of like a ticking bomb, essentially. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot. Also, she has telekinetic powers. That's sort of important. It started really weird, first of all, you know. She, you see them playing volleyball, then Carrie misses the ball, and then the game's over, and everybody's angry at her for her missing the ball. I was like, that, is that how gym class ends if somebody misses the ball? <laughs> gym class ends, and then really 